welcome to Launching Your Career, an employment skills development session sponsored by your area private industry council and the Oklahoma State University Technical Branch at Okmulgee. I'm your host, Sam Jones. In today's session, you'll be developing a high-quality resume to help you get that special job you really want. The well-prepared resume concisely summarizes your personal, educational, and employment history. Usually, it's your first chance to make a positive impression with a prospective employer. A resume is really an advertisement for your abilities and skills. It should arouse prospective employers' interests and, hopefully, get you a job interview. Like all advertising, your resume should be attractive, thought-provoking, and upbeat. Make sure your resume highlights your qualifications and tells prospective employers the specific advantages of selecting you. Photocopying on lightly colored paper will immediately set your resume apart from all the rest. Professional printing shops have graphic illustrations, which can enhance your resume's appearance. Make sure your resume is interesting and alive. Remember, the purpose of sending an employer your resume is to get an interview. If you don't get interviewed, you can't possibly get the job, no matter how well qualified you are. An effective resume opens doors. It is well worth your time to write a good one. Begin preparing your resume by organizing what you'll be selling an employer, yourself. Who are you? What have you done? What are your strengths, accomplishments, and weaknesses? Do you have technical skills which would make you a valued employee? What sets you apart from the crowd? Self-analysis will help you remember talents you've forgotten you had. After this lesson, use the self-analysis worksheet in your participant manual to carefully list your strengths, weaknesses, and skills. While there is no universally accepted resume format, you should gear your resume toward getting a specific job. All resumes should include information in five major areas. First, your resume's heart and soul is your career target or objective. After carefully considering your temperament, preferences, education, and previous employment experiences, prepare a short statement summarizing the jobs you are targeting. If you have trouble clearly stating your objective, visit with the job development specialist at your area private industry council. They'll be able to help you best state your objectives. If you are a less experienced worker, you may want to include something about your long-term goals in your career objective statement. There are three reasons you should do this. First, it shows you've given thought to your future. Prospective employers will appreciate such maturity. Second, potential employers can see how you'll fit into their company's long-term plans. If you were a company owner, wouldn't you rather hire somebody whose career goals meshed with your company's goals? Lastly, after you've been hired, employers will be more likely to consider you for openings within the company if they are aware of your career goals. A resume's second basic category, personal information, includes your full name, address, and telephone number. If a prospective employer cannot contact you to tell you you've been hired, you lose. If you're listing a relative or friend's telephone number, tell them you're using their number so they'll expect any calls. Be sure you use a correct mailing address. Some employers may notify you of your selection by mail, including additional personal information such as your birth date, motor vehicle operator's license number, or security clearance levels may be a good idea. A good rule of thumb Include additional information only if it's relevant to the specific job for which you're applying. 
New federal laws require you show your employer your social security card before you begin working. If you have never had a number or have lost your card, contact your nearest social security office. They'll help you apply for a new card or replace your lost one. If you've never had a social security card before, you need to come into our social security office to fill out the application, which is an SS5. We need to see the original or certified copy of your birth certificate and a piece of identification like a driver's license, school report card, any kind of ID card. The birth certificate proves citizenship and age and the ID is for your identification. You should receive the card in the mail in about 10 days or two to three weeks. Social Security offices are listed in your local phone book under United States government. In your resume's third section, work experience, you'll be listing your employment history in reverse order beginning with either your present job or last job. Include each position's title, the correct company name, address and telephone number, and your supervisor's name. Add the date you began and terminated with the company. If you're still employed, use the phrase, to present. Describe your responsibilities at each job using key action verbs and short phrases that paint a picture of what you can do. Avoid long and tedious job descriptions. And use numbers. They quickly tell the scope of your achievements. Remember, you're trying to convince prospective employers you have skills their company needs. Providing specific documented data about your experience is an easy way to show your skills or potential. If you have trouble organizing or writing this section, start with the company's job description. Eliminate unnecessary boring language, then use your personal insights to describe your responsibilities. After describing each job's responsibilities, highlight your accomplishments. Did you learn to operate special equipment, receive any awards or other recognition? Your responsibilities and accomplishments take on a special significance when you describe what you did about it. Asking yourself, what needed to be done? What did I do about it? is a good way to get started. Part-time or summer employment should be included in your resume particularly if it is relevant or if you are a less experienced worker. Employers looking for character favor people who use their school vacation time constructively. Image conscious companies encourage volunteer participation in community assistance activities. Did you help with a Red Cross blood drive? Serve on the hospital board? Volunteer at your church? The compassion, integrity, and community service commitment shown by your participation will be important to many employers. Some information should be omitted from your resume. Your salary requirements and reasons for leaving previous jobs should be discussed during interviews, not on your resume. While there are many legitimate reasons for leaving a job, any explanation will be cumbersome and awkward. Normally, such explanations will have no positive influence on getting you an interview. Our fourth resume category, education, may be the determining factor in landing your first big job or getting a promotion. Younger workers whose education is the most impressive thing they have to sell often place the education category before work experience in their resume. Experience is usually placed first by technicians or managers with proven experience records. A good rule of thumb? Workers with two years full-time work experience should list their experience first. If you have just graduated from college, cover this area thoroughly. List your major areas, minor fields, and any related interests. List your grade point if it was above average. Listing extracurricular activities will help indicate your well-rounded personality. The importance of college activities lessens with time. After two years full-time work experience, list only your degree, major,
graduation date, and college name. If you're attending college or a technical school but have not yet graduated, list how many years you have completed and your major subject areas. If you have gone to a special trade or technical school, list any degrees or certificates you've earned. Make sure any technical skills you gained are readily apparent. If your technical education resulted in any national or state vocational certifications, emphasize these points. If you're a high school graduate or passed the GED, list this accomplishment. Did you take any special classes such as business education or vocational courses which gave you a marketable skill? Completed continuing education or professional workshops should also be included on your resume. For each entry, list location, attendance dates, subjects studied, and any resulting new skills. These workshops illustrate personal or professional growth and are particularly important to technicians who must keep abreast of new developments. Finally, select your references. References are people who can describe your character, skills, and potential for a prospective employer. While you should choose references who will give you a good recommendation, Employers will be more likely to believe references who can accurately and impartially describe your abilities. Ask permission to use a person as a reference. This could save you some embarrassing moments later. Once references agree, list their name, address, and telephone number on your reference sheet. You may also want to explain why each reference is qualified to comment on your abilities. Under most conditions, you should not include references in your resume. Picture yourself as a prospective employer. Wouldn't you expect casually used references to be biased? If you were a reference, wouldn't you be tired of describing a candidate's assets after the 8th, 10th, or 20th phone call? Have your reference list available and be willing to provide an employer references at the proper time, after the interview, when they've become interested in you. Give a, a brief description of what he has done in the past. Uh, short to the point, I have work to do. I don't need somebody taking up a lot of my time. Uh, that helps. If he can summarize it in a way that gets my attention, that helps. I don't need a long resume. You know, I don't need a big piece of paper. Once you've outlined your resume, Organize it attractively on no more than two pages. Your resume will likely be scanned and judged in 20 seconds. All the more reason to make it short, easy to read, and pleasing to the eye. Say things simply. Make every word count. Your resume is an important personal document. Don't run to the printer with the first draft. Set it aside and come back to it a few days later. Chances are you will have forgotten some important accomplishment. Proofread your resume, asking yourself these questions. Does the finished document reflect positively on me? Why wear a suit to the interview if the resume looks like it was written by a third-rate writer? Choose a format and tailor your resume to fit your needs. Is the resume brief, to the point, and in correct English? Give employers the critical information without the clutter. Is the resume free of errors? Errors are not acceptable. Remember, this resume represents you until the interview, so be sure you're proud of it. Is the resume covered with the original letter rather than a photocopy? Duplicated letters are read like junk mail, not very often. Was the mailing envelope prepared with the same care as your resume? Is the company name and address correct? Does the letter have enough postage? Anxious to begin writing your resume? Take your time, use the forms in your manual. Think about where you've been, what you've done, and where you want to go. The difference between a good resume and a barely adequate one reflects the difference between someone who wants to do a good job and someone who will be part of the get along gang. You know you're a winner. Make sure your resume makes you sound like one. 
A well-organized resume will be your magic carpet to a successful career. Get started on your ride today as you begin launching your career.